Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you how to make uh, our seafood cornbread dressing. Uh, we have, we're going to make it with some uh, chicken thighs that I'm going to boil in this spot here. We have a, uh, what we call a trinity going on. I have one whole chopped green pepper, one whole chopped uh, onion, three stalks of celery that I've chopped up and I'm going to boil that in there. I add some oyster juice to the mix as we boil it down. And then uh, I baked uh, a double portion of uh, Quaker's brand yellow cornmeal for cornbread, except I left out the sugar because we don't want to sweet with it, okay. This um, recipe is adapted from an oyster cornbread recipe. I don't like oysters that much. So what I did, I swapped out the oysters for cr lump crab meat. About a pound I that out with the oysters and uh, this will produce something that will feed at least uh, six people, six servings. Uh, of uh, four ounce portions okay so I'm gonna start it and then uh, once it's fixed we'll put it all together our chicken in I have three uh, boneless chicken thighs that's been washed okay. start off with cold water now I'm gonna add my vegetables the the uh, trinity like I said that's uh, green pepper onion and celery. If you was making the French version of mirepoix, the uh, green pepper would be swapped out with carrots. Okay. So we're gonna let that cook through. I'm gonna turn on the stove. And also the juices that's made from boiling this chicken with the vegetables, that's gonna be our chicken stock, if you will. And then once it's done, I'm gonna add this clam juice. I said oysters, but this clam juice. This is boiled out. I'm going to add the clam juice. Okay. And uh, so it'll be like a, uh, a seafood flavor instead of this all chicken. So I'd use the, uh, the Quaker's yellow cornmeal and I doubled the recipe that's on the back for the easy cornmeal, except I left out the sugar. This is what it produced. This is my cornmeal mixture. I've already broken the cornbread down. Now to this, I'm going to add, I'm going to add my, my trinity, as I told you, there's one onion chopped up, uh, three stalks of celery chopped up, and one green pepper chopped up. I'm going to add that just like that. This is the same stuff that I boiled the uh, chicken with. Okay, here's my chicken chopped up, okay, and there was three uh, boneless thighs. Normally I would use a whole chicken and boil it and stuff, but I'm making a small portion this, this time. So we're going to... We don't want to overmix this either because we don't want our our uh, dressing to be tough. This is a classic cornmeal stuffing. I just uh, doing my version, which is a seafood stuffing. I'm gonna add eight ounces of fresh uh, claw crab meat. You can get the uh, the other one. I forget what it's called, but it's it's more. You don't need that much. So we're just gonna toss that in there like that. Again, we're gonna break it up. Because okay. all this is going to be mixed together. Now, if, if you recall, I was going to add clam juice. I'm going to add all that, but before I do that, I'm going to add about a, I'm going to do a full teaspoon of sage. I'm going to level it off because I don't want to use a lot of sage. Because uh, then you're, if you use too much sage, then your dressing, your dressing will come out greenish in color. I'm going to add a tablespoon of black pepper for this amount of dressing. You know, I may have to add more, but I'm going to start off with a tablespoon, which is only three teaspoons. It may look like a lot, but trust me, it's not. Now I'm going to add slowly this one tablespoon, one teaspoon, I'm sorry, one teaspoon of salt. And if I had to add more salt, I would, but I just start off with something small, okay? I'm going to kind of mix this up a little bit because I'm going to add the clam juice next. I'm going to add the clam juice. I'm going to add all this, okay? Eight ounces of clam juice. And you, like I say, you don't want to, you want to take your time with this. So you kind of want to stir it gently. Now the chicken stock or the juice that was left over from boiling the chicken and the vegetables, I'm going to add a little bit of that. 
probably about a fourth of a cup at a time. Again, we gotta fold this so we can be gentle with it. Raking the bottom of it, turning it over. We get a little wet. I'm gonna add a little bit more. We don't want it over wet and we don't want it too dry. Taste test. I'm only going to use two spoons because the first one should let me know if I need to add more pepper or more salt. Okay? So we'll do the first taste test. Two more teaspoons of salt. That makes a total of three. And a little bit more black pepper, which we're only going to put a teaspoon in. Stir this up. The work for when I was younger, a professional painter was teaching me how to um, do interior decorating, and he told me when the when the brush was dry, it would make a sound. And I don't know if you can hear this, but this this dressing is making a little bit of sound. <laughs> so. I'm going to add just a little bit more juice. I'm not going to add any more. That's quite enough. I don't want it to be soupy, but I do want it to be wet. So as it cooks and the steam is released from the, uh, the dressing as it sets, it'll, it'll start drying out. But like I said, I don't want it too dry at the end product. Okay, and let's do another taste test. Okay, season just right. I'm gonna get a, a few more stirs. Like I said, be gentle with you. Don't want to overwork everything. The 12 by one by eight by 11 and two inch deep Pyrex pan. So this should be enough to just fill it up to the top. A little paprika on it. You don't have to do this. And I don't do it all the time. Just at this time I'm doing it. Okay, just like that. I'll put this in a 350 degree oven for about, I will say 30 minutes. This is gonna brown darker. It's, uh, it's already cooked basically, essentially, but we're gonna, it's gonna dry it out a little bit. And it's gonna have the consistency that when you take a spoon, you can spoon into it and it'll hold up by itself. And more liquid than it would've been a soupy type of uh, uh, dressing which I don't particularly care for no. and when I was growing up some of my family members would make uh, dressing like that and I really didn't like it so this is going to hold up to where you can cut it out in sections or spoon it out it'll hold up by itself and it'll taste absolutely great 30 minutes about 30 minutes and 350 degrees It's been in the oven for uh, 35 minutes and it's, it's finished. Uh, you can do it darker if you want to, but this is just fine. So I'm gonna cut into this, like I said. Let's see, it's holding up. Serve this with uh, some applesauce or some cranberry sauce. I prefer applesauce. See, it's, it's uh, it's moist but not wet. It's dry but not stiff. I mean, not overly stiff. Let's taste this. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, that's good. You can taste all the flavors the seafood, the crab, chicken. Nice. The seafood and the chicken. And the mirror, uh, not the mirror pot, but the uh, the Trinity, which we made, which was the green pepper, the onion, and the celery. And um, this is salt and pepper, a little bit of sage, but not overbearing. So I only added a teaspoon of sage. The black pepper and the salt, this brought everything into balance. It tastes really good.